So you split apart your iPhone 10 and now you want to get it back together. This is a short little video that's going to show you our technique for putting the iPhone 10 split boards back together and it's all about the solder paste. So think for a minute how hard this job would be if you had to do it using the standard lead-free 221 degree solder paste. It would be really, really hard. And then think about how easy it would be if you could use something really loose like chip quick that would just instantly make balls. So we're going to use something that's in the middle and that's the secret to getting your reballing to go to go really well. So we're going to reball the bo the board and my suggestion for you guys is to start with a really low melt like 138 degree solder paste and then work up to something that is more robust. So ideally being able to do it with regular 6337 leaded 183 degree solder. So kind of work your way up to that but make it easier on yourself when you start out. Things are always going to be easier when when you're using the lower melt stuff. All right, I'm gonna start by showing you guys that this board will turn on. So what state is it in to begin with? This is a board here for data recovery all the way from New Zealand. And after recovering the data using the eye socket, I'm now gonna put the put it back on our known good screen. We will connect a dock and a battery. All right, and let's boot the sucker up with the dock. All right, so let's see if this thing will boot up. This is, this is the top board together with its bottom board ready to go back to the customer. So it's already been recovered. This phone had a lot of damage. It went through a washing machine. So I wanted, I, but I think it's a good case for us because I think it's going to at least boot up so that we can show you after reballing, it should still boot up. All right, so here we go. And this phone is booted up and it has no touch. And that's gonna be a problem between its interconnect on the bottom board. So we're not gonna to try to fix that problem since the data is already recovered and the housing has so much damage that it doesn't make sense for this to be a phone again. All right, so what does the reball process look like? Uh, first, we're going to prep the pads on both sides of this board. So I'm gonna stick the bottom board into the little jig and this one I think is already pretty good because I, I recently went over the pads, but let's take a look under. All right, so this time I braided the pads to get off of anything prior. Pop it in the stencil holder. Stencil fitted on top. Let's use our 6337 traditional leaded solder with a melting temperature of about 183 degrees. All right, I'm gonna use the baby condom and work this paste into the board. Okay, let's get the excess off with just the paper towel. We 
we are going to make some balls. Use my standard nozzle and a standard a standard temperature, not the super low that I normally use for reballing, because this metal stencil is going to suck up the heat. I'm going to bring the airflow down a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this stencil click up and down. That's okay. I'm just working in one area at a time. Now my goal is to just make the balls. I don't really care if they're stick up in the stencil or down on the board. I just want to make the balls here in this pattern. move down a little bit. Now as I get to the center I know the stencil is going to want to cup. That's okay. God damn it! That is not okay! My light came off as usual. All right. So that delay of game was a little unfortunate because I'm keeping the stencil hot, almost at kind of a point like on a, a seesaw where it's hot enough just hot enough to melt these balls but not so hot that I can mash together paste that just wants to slide together under the stencil All I'm trying to do is to get them to crisp up into their balls in this pattern. All right, let's go back over here and continue along. Now, if you've done this using one of the lower melt bismuth alloys, then you kind of get a feel for it. And you can see, all right, this is going to work. This is really similar. It's just taking longer because the leaded solder has a little bit of a higher melting temperature. There we go, all the way around. Great, so we've made balls everywhere. Some of the balls are stuck up in the stencil, but now we can be more aggressive with the heat, add a little bit of flux. The flux at the beginning would have been getting us into trouble. We would have had big slides underneath the stencil. But now we can get away with it. Now we know that these guys really aren't going to want to slide together under there, so the stencil can go ahead and bend. We can be more aggressive. See how it's totally come up over there? And that's okay, because the balls, the, the solder paste has already formed balls.
Stencil deck, we want the stencil to be kind of up high. Because this stencil is going to have to come off soon. Our goal is to just get guys like this one that's still up in the stencil to drop down. Drop down, bro. These guys are still up. This little family. There they go. Dropping on down. Good job, fellas. Well-behaved balls. Doesn't everyone love a set of well-behaved balls like these guys? Alright, one rogue dude over here. I think he's our last one that's really bad. Get in there. Go on now. Drop down. You, get down. Looks like on that one there might be some debris in the stencil or something that is causing that problem. So we'll let him slide. He's going to come off with the stencil and we'll put him back on by hand. All right, looks good. Time to take the stencil off and tighten up our balls. All right, bro. I'm watching you. See how he comes up? He's going to have a reason. Oh, there he goes. Where did he go? Okay, let's have a look around. Looks like we're in really good shape. So let's clear the little paste nuggets so that we don't have bridges. This stuff, if it's, if you might want to wait for it to be hard so that you can kind of flick it off like that. All right, a little bit of flux all the way around. And we'll tighten these balls up. So let's get this guy to suck onto his proper spot. Good job, buddy. This seems like it should go in Reddit. Oddly satisfying. Shiny balls. Shiny balls. Tight and shiny balls. Love it. All right, per perfect. All right, let's put these two halves together and we can use a bunch of different things. This is one possibility. This will work just fine. And it's dedicated for the iPhone 10. iPhone 10 board fits in here really nicely. This is a positioner. Now you, you don't want to push down on the top of this when you're soldering it together, just like any other chip. You never wanna push on molten solder balls. So that's one possibility that'll work. This thing is a total piece of crap. This thing belongs in the trash can. So I opened it up from China about two days ago and it is currently in my trash can as an utterly useless tool that you will not be finding on iPad Rehab Supply. Um, if you haven't yet bought a dedicated iPhone 10 heater, you don't have to. You can just use the good old tried and true Big Red from iPad Rehab Supply. This guy is the you know good old boy that will 
Uh, you can shove a lot of things on here. I use this for, for most of my preheater stuff, although we are going to try out the the eye rework station and let you know about that. And we will also probably try out anything else that is in China. Now, if you are a manufacturer and you want us to try out your stuff, then give us a holler at iPadRehab.com. All right, so this is, this is just like a chip. We want to use surface tension to suck those balls onto each other without pushing down. We don't want to push down. Now, if the board is really, really bent, then it and and you're having trouble getting it together then maybe it shouldn't be together because if the board is so bent that the chips themselves are sitting on saucer that's really not good it needs to be straight uh this one seems pretty okay and this is going to suck on to each other just like um just like a chip so you you shouldn't press you shouldn't need to press down on it in any spot and if it is kind of bowed up a little bit it will heal that it will heal that if it's pretty minor. Look for some kind of obstruction. Maybe there's some paste in there. Maybe there's a little bit of the solder from your reballing stuck down on a chip or something like that. In my experience, these guys generally go back together. And if you do it a whole bunch, then it becomes uh, pretty straightforward, just like anything else. If you have been struggling with this, and I struggled with it for a while when I started out, Start with something that's a super, super low melt. Start with something that's like 138. Then it'll be really easy. And then work your way up to the stuff that's more robust. The 172 is what we recommend for this job. Today, I'm using 183 standard leaded solder, just for this example, because that's what I happen to have here at home. All right, so we are going to put some top heat on. And I really don't like kind of just relying on my eyes. You know, I find it hard to watch these two layers suck together. There we go. You can see it bubbling. You can see it moving. There we go. I, I wish that you could see that. I'm just using my eyes. I don't think there's a way for me to get the camera to, to kind of notice that. So that's just kind of... Standard, just like an audio IC job. And my bottom heat is at 128 right now, and my top heat right now on this this quick, it's pretty pretty hot, 370. All right, now I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to let it cool down. You can learn the hard way if you say, "Okay, seems good," and <laughs> you grab it right now. It's going to potentially be loose. So we're gonna let it cool down before we try to take it off of this preheater. So that we're gonna come back to in a few minutes. All right, camera battery has run out a bunch of times, so my clips are all over the place. This is cooled down. I don't know if I have a clip of looking at the edges. So let's go ahead and look at the edges under the microscope. Ooh, it's bright this time of day. Um, all right, so this is this is what this should look like. So this is put together with the lead, regular leaded 6337. Can we see that? There we go. All right, so as we, as we look at how these guys go together, let's take a little bit of alcohol and see if we can see. Let's get a clean Q-tip, not one with solder paste on it. All right. And we can see the edge here that the, you know, these guys have sucked together on here really similar between the layer that we put on and the bottom layer. So the top and bottom layer look really, really similar. And we can see that here at the edge, which tends to curl up, there is a bigger gap, but it's natural, right? There, There's a bigger gap on the side of the board maybe it looks better like this yeah on the side that we just reballed and stuck together this is the joint that we just made right here ah this is the joint <laughs> this camera's a little bit out of alignment right there see how that gap is is bigger than the gap between the interposer board and the bottom board a little solder ball sticking out um but that's that's it does that by itself so my point is that we don't really 
need to have elaborate apparatus to get these things back together. That if you get your temperatures right and you get your paste right, you get your reball right, if you get all that right, then this really does go back together again and again and again, pretty, pretty straightforward, just like a chart. All right, now I'm gonna click back over to this camera. Maisie, oh, here we go. Maisie needs to get to sophomore practice. All right, so let's take a look at this and see if we can boot the sucker up. So this looks good to me and I would expect that this is is got a good chance of being okay. So let's boot it back up. Where is the screen? Here we go. And we'll see. Okay. We'll do it that way. I really like these for I really like these um, extension cables for iPhone 10 because you get a lot of wear and tear on the connectors. That battery connector's got some flux in it. All right, let's put these blinds down, maybe. There. There we go. And it has booted up. All right, so there we go. There is our board all put back together and it is booted up. Yep, there it goes. All right, is that even in focus? There we go, all right. I don't, and it didn't have touch to, oh, we healed touch. And touch is working. Yay, it's a miracle. Hmm, I wonder if that means my little flex guy that I just said I love. Okay, this, no, this phone, this phone was, this phone trolled me because I can't understand what any of that stuff said. And when it first booted up, it booted up uh, disabled, but it said disabled in a bunch of uh, Chinese characters. And I was just so excited that it booted up that I was trying to, you know, like swipe across the notification, and nothing's moving. So I thought it had a, a touch problem for a really long time. Hey, this is great. So um, eventually it just had to wait out that countdown. My kids were smart enough to recognize that. All right, so this phone has booted up and it has... All right, this phone has booted up and it is working for touch and they'll be able to I guess get it back and see if and see for themselves. So this was here for data recovery, but um, that is that is booted up and working. So for you guys, I think the key with these is that you you know d rather than thinking about like tool design and clamping and top pressure and jigs and stuff like that, my advice to you is to uh, to just do it a lot, reball and expect it to behave like a chip and in the end, it will. If you're struggling with this, come on out to Masterclass. It's at May 17th through the 24th. Masterclass is all about this kind of stuff because this is what we're gonna have to all be doing when audio IC and touch IC easy one chip jobs dry up. We're gonna need to be able to, to split these boards, fix problems. If you wanna do a TriStar job, now Hydra on the iPhone 10, you're gonna have to be able to get these boards apart and back together again. So. Uh, come on out to Masterclass and we will be right there and we will be able to kind of see what's going wrong with your technique and get you all sped up, up to, up to, uh, up to speed and ready to work on these iPhone 10 and beyond. That's it for our iPhone 10 reballing video.